Okay guys, what's up? Just a little update. It is winter here. Just thought I'd show everyone. Trees are dead. The mean curve. So yeah, we're gonna still check out some bikes today. Just thought I'd give you an update on the outside situation why there's not been many ride videos. I do have a few stockpiles, so I'll be launching those off soon-ish and integrating them more into review videos. But for now, it's winter. Hopefully in a couple more months and we'll be back riding again. All right, let's go see if we've uh, got anything new. If not, we'll do a talking head video on something new. What's up, YouTube? Shaking the table, okay. Today we are checking out the Trek Marlin for the most underrated of all the Trek Marlins. Um, this is what Trek calls the perfect gateway to trail riding. Ideal for new riders who want a mountain bike with knobby tires that can double as a rugged commuter. And honestly, that might be one of the best descriptions you can give a bike like this. It's not got crazy amount of features. It's got pretty basic shifting, three by seven, just like the Marlin 5 although the shift lever is a little bit different, won't change that feel of it too much. So the shifting between the Marlin 4 and Marlin 5 is very, very similar. Now the big changes come when you look at that front fork. That's where you gotta go down to a 28 mil stanchion and that is what's gonna differentiate this from a trail bike to more of that heavy, rugged commuter. So as with all the Trek Marlins, the Marlin 4 comes with all the racking, all the mounts, that really nice, um, kickstand integration that Trek's doing on many of their bikes now. It has all that, really setting it up for a really good commuter. Now, when you're looking at it back on the mountain bike scene, it's hard to change things around. So for a mountain bike, it's losing a few key features. One, the big thing I think is going back to that cable disc brake. So disc brake does work, it works really well. A lot of the Norcos and other brands do have an entry level model with this, Trek just doesn't touch too much on this. You're really looking at the 820 with the rim brakes, really basic. Then you're either just going to a straight up commuter bike or that's it, there is no others. They have the Merlin 4, which is just such a small category of their bikes. The Merlin 5 is so action packed. It is an interesting bike, but brakes are also a very easy upgrade. So it's something you could change later down the line. They all come with about 100 mils of travel. Obviously in the really small sizes, you go back down to, a, I think an 80 mil. That 28 mil stanchion on the front fork is gonna make it a little less stable through rough terrain. So this is probably more of a fire roads kind of bike, light trails, kind of that easy mowed down grass trail. Lots of places to ride this place, but when you're talking about single track, that suspension is not gonna hold up as well. It's like taking the A20, it's doable, but it's just not as capable. If you haven't seen the A20 video, click whichever side it pops up here and we'll find that for you. Impressively enough, they do go to a 31.8 handlebar here, so it is pretty good. And it's nice that they've actually chose to do that. And then you actually have the XR Endurance um, lock on grips, so it's gonna be a little bit more comfy even for your general riding around. The handlebar as well, they've made to a 720 mil width, so a pretty good size for those kind of regular sizes. Obviously in the small and extra small, they make it a teeny bit smaller, um, just makes sense. And um, this is just gonna give you a little more control, stick to that more wide stance mountain bike feel as opposed to that tight, twitchy commuter. So that's gonna be more for that kind of easier riding around town as opposed to the fast I'm a bike courier commuter. Comes with the basic pedals, same as the Merlin 5, 14 to 28. So it's um, it's not got a really high end fast gear, although with the three, it, it kind of compensates. So you get that fast in the big one. It's not too bad, but again, many mountain bikes are starting down in that 10 speed um, kind of high gear range, and that's where you get any speed from. So this is just, again, something just more designed for commuting, keeps that real pacing in the back end really efficient, and then you'll be shifting the front ones a lot. Something generally you don't even wanna do off trails because there's so much chain movement there. Over a rough bump, you're risking the chance of the chain just straight up falling off. 
The tires, interestingly enough, do come with 29 2.2s. These are also upgradable to 2.35s if you wanted to fit something beefier in there. And remember, a 700C actually fits on a standard 29 inch rim. So this is something cool. You could put like a 40C 700 tire on there, similar to a gravel bike, and get a really fast commuter, or put something a little bit more beefy on there and be a little more friendly off-road, or even just a little bit more absorption on the road. They do have a standard freewheel on here, so you're not gonna be upgrading this rear cassette in any which way, just like the Marlin 5 as well. It is a double-walled connection rim by Bontrager and uh, just standard QRs. Coil spring, obviously, in the front. You're not getting a 28 mil uh, air shock, but it's still pretty cool. And they have the Alpha Silva aluminum on here. Makes it a fairly lightweight bike. Let's see here. Like they're putting at 32 pounds for a medium with tubes. Um, that's actually pretty impressive. Max rider weight of 300 pounds. So those double walled rims will actually hold up a little bit. So the nice thing about the Marlin 4 is it does carry over a lot of the looks features. So it's got the integrated cables. It's a very clean design. The frame design is super nice and then only has that little swoop down in the small and extra small frames. Otherwise in the medium or bigger, you're just going to that nice clean straight one and that's men's and women's. They don't really have men's and women's in the Marlin 4 or at all anymore. They just have the two colors. So you're looking at that matte anthracite as trek calls it and the magenta so the magenta is the same as the pre-cal matte anthracite i don't think they've had on any other bike before definitely let me know in the comments if i'm wrong there but i think it's going to be a really sharp looking bike so when you're comparing what a marlin 4 is it's pretty interesting it is a bike which we don't sell which i don't sell too much or <clears throat> i don't know if i've ever sold one they're easily repaired and cheap to repair so you can see a lot of schools or big clubs buying these because the disc brakes, super easy to maintain. You don't need any fancy tools, just replace that cable. The gearing is also affordable, so it keeps the costs really low. And then this comfy and wide range of sizes, they have seven different sizes in all the Mar Marlin series, including the Marlin 4, makes it really affordable for any group to potentially purchase. And potentially like a school group or a larger group where there's gonna be lots of maintenance, lots of use of these bikes. It's a really ideal bike for that. As soon as you jump up to a Marlin 5 and you add hydraulic disc brakes, well now you're running into issues there with maintenance and who's gonna fix that. And you actually need qualified tools and potentially a person to do that. Whereas the Marlin 4, you can kind of just wing it. The cool thing with the Marlin 4 as well, they do put short reach levers on the smallest sizes and narrower handlebars, like I said. Just gives people a little bit more fit and comfort to it. Really, in my opinion, the Marlin 4 is leaning more towards that commuter entry level bike. You are definitely gonna be keeping this on the gentler side of trails. You're not gonna be too crazy. That being said, take your bike wherever you wanna take it. It's not gonna make a big difference. Obviously, you're not gonna win a downhill at Whistler, but it's something you can do. You know, a lot of photographers say the best camera you have is the one which is with you, and that it's the same as biking. To a degree, I wouldn't take a triathlon bike even on a downhill course, but you could definitely take a Merlin 4 on a downhill course. It is more function towards the commuting around, flat track, and going to the grocery store, but it's pretty awesome this way. I would definitely recommend looking at the Trek Merlin 5, check out the video for that, wherever it is above me. And then if you're looking to go a little more mountain bikey, check out the Merlin 6 or 7. And then if you really just think about a commuter, and you're really only gonna be doing a bit of gravel, herd pack, maybe some very light trail. The dual sports way you should be looking at. That being said, the Merlin series, if you're unsure, five, six, seven, and maybe even four are bikes which will do everything. One bike, you don't need to switch out between each category, you can just use one. That's the bike you should look at. Yeah, Trek does a good job with this bike. I'm pretty impressed with it. it. It's basic, there's nothing fancy about it, but they're not selling it as fancy. The price isn't crazy. It looks clean. It has all the kind of featurettes, you know, like the blender stem, internal cables, all the rack mounts you could ever want, all the kickstand mounts. Like everything about it is just really nice. All right guys, sorry I didn't have one in person. Hopefully one day Trek will send me some bikes to check out, but until then, click on the links below to see what else there is 
about these bikes. I've thrown some pictures throughout the video here. That's the Trek Merlin 4 in a nutshell. It's a pretty simple bike and that's all you need to know about it. So get out there, get your bike ordered and um, yeah, good luck.